So if polynomials went well for you, this unit will probably go well for you. If polynomials did not go well, fix it. Come and see me. Come for some extra help. Email me. We can fix it before we get to the end of this unit. Here's what product law says. It says if you have x to the n, and you're multiplying it by x to the m, x to the n times x to the m. Let's just pause there. And what is this little dot that I just threw in there? Why aren't I using an x for multiplication? It's confusing because we got x's as a base, we got x's as multiplication. So just know we use the dot in the same way. Okay, what do we do with these two numbers when we're multiplying? What do we do with the exponents? We add them. So this equals x to the n plus m. That is called product law. Product means multiply. x to the n times x to the m equals x to the n plus m. Nothing new from polynomials. All we're going to do is stick in bigger numbers now. Here's the explanation. So the exact same law in words if you're a wordy person. When multiplying like bases, When multiplying like bases, when multiplying like bases, keep the base, but add the exponents. When multiplying like bases, keep the base but add the exponents. Brody, where's your note? So go get another one. So product law says if you're multiplying, you actually end up adding the exponents. That's the trick. Multiplying a basis means you add the exponent. Well, why? Why is it like that? And we actually did this in unit two, but I'm just going to repeat it. And I'm going to go to the example before I go to the y. So let's do that x to the 5 times x to the 4 that we just looked at. x to the 4 times x to the 5. We're going to keep that base, so we're going to keep it as x. We're not going to change it. And all we do is add those little exponents together. 5 plus 4 equals 9. Okay, well, let's look at the y. What does x to the 5 mean? So we did this before the break. What does an exponent mean? Does that mean x times 5? So we're, this means x times x times x times x times x. And what does x to the 4 mean? x times x times x times, this is why we have exponents, because we don't want to say that out every single time. And if we look at that expanded form, how many x's do I have on the top row, and how many x's do I have at the bottom row? I've got nine of them. That's why we add the exponents. Nothing new with this law. We did it last unit. We're just making the numbers bigger, that's all. I'm going to go to the examples and then we'll come back to quotient law. First one, 6 to the 3 or 6 cubed times 6 to the 4. 6 cubed times 6 to the 4. Here's what your brain's going to want to do. Your brain's going to see 6 times 6 and you're going to want to put down 36. And then you're going to remember something about adding the exponents. So you're going to take 3 plus 4 and make it into 7. So you're going to write down 36 to the 7th. Is that the correct answer? No. no. Let's talk about why that's not the correct answer. Well, what does 6 to the 3 mean? 6 times 6 times 6. And what does 6 to the 4 mean? 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Is that the same as 36 times 36 times 36 times 36 times 36 times, no. So that's what your brain is going to want to do because you're going to see that 6 times 6. The exponent law says we keep the base, we add the exponent. What's the base? 6, so we do not change it. We just add those exponents. How many do we have? 7. 3 plus 4 equals 7. Your brain is going to want to say 36 because you're going to see 6 times 6. You need to stop your brain in that instance. This one we just did as the example, x to the 4 times x to the 5, x to the 9. 
What's the difference if I have brackets in the question or I have my multiplication dot in the question? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. It all means multiply and multiply means product and this is all called product law. Three to the three times three to the 15. Do not put down nine to the anything. It's what your brain is gonna wanna do because you see three times three. But we need to think about what this means. This is three threes and this is 15 threes. How many threes are we gonna have when we add those together? Three to the 18. Negative two to the seven, negative two to the what now? Right, so we know there's that imaginary one that we've talked about before. We don't change the base. So if the base is negative two, I'm gonna keep it negative two. If the brace had brackets, I'm gonna keep those brackets and all I'm gonna do is add the exponents. Seven plus one is? Why are the brackets important here? High five. High five. Remember way back before the break, we looked at this thing with negatives and the even exponent and the odd exponent and what do we say about brackets? If the base is negative, what's the deal with brackets? Even exponent is? Switch way back in your head, it's there, it's there. Even exponent means it is positive. Negative exponent means it is negative. That's why you need to keep the brackets. So I'm just gonna highlight them, just so when you look back to this example, you realize that we've kept those brackets. If you were to drop them, you would make this negative, and it's not negative, it's positive. Oh, we'll be getting there. Like way down here, mm-hmm. X to the four times X to the five. Take a look at this one and take a look at this one. It looks different, I've written it different, but does it mean anything different? No, I don't care if there's brackets, I don't care if there's a dot, this is gonna be X to the? A squared times A squared. A to the four. Four to the four times four to the six. Write down the answer. Four to the four times four to the six. Your brain's gonna wanna put a 16 down because your brain's gonna see four times four. You need to pull your brain back and say, no, we keep the base, so this is gonna stay a four. What do I do with those exponents? Add them, which gives me four to the 10. What do I do when there's more than two bases? Same thing, I could have 10 bases. I don't care, we're just gonna keep the base and add the exponents, so this is still gonna be a three and all we need them to do is add up the exponents, so four plus five, plus six. Two to the three and three to the two. So which base do we keep if they're different? Can we simplify them using product law if they are different? No, so this would be exactly the same thing, Ooh, if, as I copied it wrong cannot simplify with this exponent law. Bases have to be the same. Here's another little exception. Is this is called product rule or product law. And what does product mean? Multiplying. This rule only exists when you are multiplying the bases. Can I just add these exponents together if I am adding? Well, is two times two times two times two times two plus two times two the same as two to the seven? No, so this is the exact same thing, no simplifying when it's a plus, not a multiplication. So in the first one, I'm gonna highlight the two bases. This one, I'm gonna highlight the plus sign. This law only works when you are multiplying, not when you are adding. Question so far? Show me your thumb, getting it, kinda getting it, not getting it. Awesome, we're gonna do something a little bit different today and I'm gonna pause. And we're act quotient. Yeah, quotient law means division, that's exactly right. So I'm just gonna put that over here. Product law means when we multiply. Uh, yeah, you can't see that. Product law means when we multiply. Latif, you need to pick another seat because that's the second time now you guys don't know what we're doing because you're not listening. Uh, we're moving on to something else. You need to pick another seat. Front row, first seat. Go, go, go. What does quotient mean? Division. Still on freeze. Totally can't see that. Quotient law says x to the n 
divided by x to the m. And typically, we write that as a fraction. I don't know. Could I, could, I don't know. It could be a and b, I guess. I don't know. x to the n times x to the m equals x to the, what did you do in unit two when we divided? Subtracted, n minus m. In words, if you're a wordy person, when dividing the bases or like bases, when dividing like bases, keep the base. but subtract the exponents. When dividing like bases, keep the base, but subtract the exponents. Going to the example first, then we'll do the y. Let's do x to the 9 divided by x to the 3. What your brain is going to want to do is divide those numbers. They're going to see a division sign. It's going to see 9 and 3, and you're going to divide 9 by 3 and get 3. It's not what the exponent law says. The exponent law says we subtract. So 9 minus 3 would be 6. Let's talk about the y. Well, what does x to the 9 mean? x times x times how many more times on the bottom what does x to the 3 mean x times x times x And if I ignore everything else but the first x on the bottom and the first x on the top, what's x divided by x? Well, what's any number divided by itself? What's 4 divided by 4, or 5 divided by 5, or 20 divided by 20? So these can be canceled. And I could do the same with the second x's. And I could do the same with the third x's. And then I'm out of x's on the bottom. So then I just need to count how many do I have left on the top. And that's why we subtract, because there's 6 left on the top. trick is when you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. Quotient law is one of the easiest to recognize because they always look like little fractions. And again, your brain's going to play tricks on you. What your brain is going to want to do here is divide the twos. It's going to see two divided by two and it's going gotta, it's gotta to want to put one. But with quotient law, do we change the base? No. So I'm going to keep the base of two. All I'm going to do is subtract the exponents. What's five minus three? Six to the six divided by six to the four. I'm going to keep the six. I'm just going to subtract the exponents. What's six minus four? Negative seven to the ten divided by negative seven to the seven. Well, first of all, there's brackets, so we know we need to keep those. Then on the outside, the new exponent's going to become three. Three to the two over three to the six. Be careful. There's a little trick to here to this one. You've got to just be careful that what you're doing in your head is 2 minus 6, not 6 minus 2. What's 2 minus 6? Negative 4. So this one happens to have a negative in the exponent. Be careful with this one as well. 3 to the 2 divided by 3 to the minus 4. We're going to keep the base at 3. What you're doing here is 2 minus minus 4. 2 minus minus 4. So what your brain's going to want to put is negative 2. But what happens with this negative negative in the middle? It switches to plus. So 2 plus 4, 6. Which part? Which part don't you get? x to the 4 divided by x, I'm going to keep the x. What's on the bottom that we don't see? We know it's there. 
It's a one, so if I have four on the top and one on the bottom, what do I have? Well, now, x's and y's, what do I do with them? We'll just do them separately. Look at the x's first, subtract the exponents. One, so do I need to write that? I'm going to put it as imaginary one just so you can see later where it went that we talked about it. And then I'm going to do the y's by themselves. Seven minus eight, negative one. Okay, so if there's two variables, do them separately. Don't panic. It's a negative one, seven minus eight. Negatives we have to show. Yeah, good question. Here we've thrown in some coefficients. So this is just like unit two, coefficients we do separately. So what's 25 divided by five? So no exponent law there, that's just a straight up division. The exponent law now comes with the x's. x to the three over x gives me x squared. Because they're coefficients. 